everyone, Dr. R here. Let's go over an epidemiology question. So we'll start off with the lead-in. See if we can answer it, look at the answer choices, and then maybe consider going to the STEM if we need to. So first off, I'd like you to pause your video and try to answer this question and then write down why each one is correct or each one is incorrect. All right, so pause now. Great. So let's take a look at the lead-in. Which of the following is a limitation of probabilistic? So we're looking at probabilistic sampling, and we want to know about the limitations of probabilistic sampling. So can we just go to the answer choices without wasting time on reading this? Yeah, it's possible, because we're really talking about limitations of probabilistic, and we've done our homework, so we know some of the limitations. So let's just dive right in. So probabilistic sampling allows the researcher to control for bias in the sample. Well, that's not necessarily true because whether we have probabilistic or non-probabilistic, they both have a chance of having bias, but there is less likely chance of getting bias in the sampling because in probabilistic, um, we end up with, if we do simple, we end up with uh, about an equal chance of a participant getting into the experimental or the control group, for instance, right? So if I'm a patient or a participant in this group, I have a 50% chance of getting in here and getting in here if I randomize, right? Uh, if I do non-probabilistic, uh, say like um, uh, convenience sampling um, or availability sampling, then um, I don't have uh, an equal chance. Um, also remember that if I were to do a stratified, then I have a less than equal chance of getting in because we are stratifying by uh, age, weight, height, ethnicity. Um, and if I do clustering, then I also have a less than equal because we are looking at things like zip code and they might not be the exact balance, but they are more balanced and probably more generalizable more often than if I do non-probabilistic. But there is a chance that I might be such a good researcher that I might choose groups and both groups might be balanced in non-probabilistic and they might represent the, the, the original population. That might happen. It's less likely though given that chance is being used in probabilistic. But probabilistic uh, does not allow the researcher to control for more bias. So that is not a limitation because chance is driving this, not control. So that is not a limitation of probabilistic. Even though that there is a chance for bias in each one, in this one, chance drives it and not control. This one I control because I am choosing the availability of who goes in there or doing a convenient sample. All right, so B, probabilistic sampling ensures that every member of the population has an equal chance of being selected. Is that a limitation? I don't think that's a limitation. I think that is a benefit. And this is really talking about simple probabilistic, right? So we talked about that, 50% chance, equal chance um, of getting in here. So uh, that is not a limitation. I think that's one of the benefits. Um, all right, so probabilistic sampling is less time consuming. Uh, it depends. There's a lot of factors that go into time consuming, so we would need to come up here and then look at what the question stem says. So I'm not going to rule that one out, um, but that doesn't sound completely correct. Um, and is it a limitation? I don't know. 
So probabilistic sampling is more effective in reducing sampling error compared to non-probabilistic. So sampling error can happen in both probabilistic and non-probabilistic for very different reasons. So, um, but is it more likely to have sampling error in probabilistic versus non-probabilistic for using chance versus not using chance. I think that this is one of the benefits and not a limitation of this. So probabilistic sampling doesn't always prove more effective in reducing sampling error, but there is, because it does use chance, it is often more effective in reducing sampling error because we end up with balanced groups more often then we end up with balanced groups and non-probabilistic. So, probabilistic sampling may not be feasible in populations with low response rates. Actually, that can be a limitation. So, what does it mean by low response rates? Really, what it's talking about are another situation would be a rare disease. So if we had a population and we only had two people or three people in the entire population, and let's say we had one million people in that population and three people had the disease, probabilistic would be an issue because if each person, we had one million dots here, but only three people that had the disease, if three people had the disease and we wanted to make sure that these three people were included in our study because we're going to be giving them a new drug, we're going to have to have 500,000 people in this and 500,000 people in this because each one of the million has a 50% chance of getting into either the experimental group or the control group, right? That is a problem. That makes it so that probabilistic is not feasible. It becomes very expensive um, and it becomes very time consuming. It's difficult to do. So oftentimes in rare diseases or when we have low response rates, probabilistic sampling is not going to be the best choice. Non-probabilistic, where we might have uh, availability, convenience sampling, or we might choose people that have identified with the disease and then choose people who have not identified with the disease and then we put them in the experimental and put them in the control. So that would be more like maybe a clustering or, or, or some, not sorry, not clustering, I don't want to confuse you with probabilistic. But that might be more like a case control type study. Or we would then describe that we are choosing people that have the disease to make sure they get in there, right? So probabilistic falls apart in these kind of rare situations. Now let's go back to probabilistic sampling being less time consuming. Well, that is not always true. Sometimes it's true, but it's not always true. So I really think what they're trying to get at is I really think they're trying to get at E being the most correct answer. And this is not incorrect, but I don't think it is always, I don't think in this situation is the most correct as far as a limitation. Now let's go back to the STEM. A research team is conducting a study to investigate the prevalence. So we talk a lot about prevalence, right? And that is the total people that have the disease in a population at a specific time over the total population at a specific time, right? So that's the prevalence of a genetic disorder in a large population. This is a large population here, one million. They are considering using probabilistic sampling to select their participants. Well, in that situation with a large population, if we had a rare disease or we had a low response rate in this large population, E is now definitely the most correct answer. I hope you agree.